You cannot believe what Japan and the U.S. soldiers did in Okinawa. You cannot believe what happened to local people when the United States put a new military bases in another country. In this episode, we're gonna talk about what the imperialists have done to different parts of the world to achieve their geopolitical goals. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk It Out with me. I'm Li Jingjing. And this show aims to show you the different voices and the stories that are often being neglected by Western mainstream media. So after U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited the Taiwan island, the tensions across the Taiwan streets have been escalated. Everybody is looking at this region, the East Asia and Southeast Asia, and wonder whether another war is gonna break out. But is her visit really about bringing democracy and freedom to the people living on the Taiwan island? If you look at the U.S. foreign policies in the past few decades, it's always about encircling China and then control the whole Indo-Pacific region. The United States have hundreds of military bases in the whole Indo-Pacific region. It's on Okinawa, on Guam, on Marshall Islands, on the Philippines, everywhere. But are those military bases bring any good to those countries, to those regions? Absolutely no. It brought atrocities, crimes towards the local people. And today, I have a guest gonna tell us more about it. So joining me today is Rob Kajivara. Joining me from Luchu, he's a native Okinawan. So welcome, Rob. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So before we continue to discuss these、uh, aggressions, imperialist aggressions towards the indigenous people in Okinawa,、uh, first, can you tell our viewers about more about yourself and your work? Yes, yes. So I'm、uh, Robert Kajiwara,、uh, also known by my uh, uh, Luchuan name,、uh, Fija Takamasa, or my Chinese name Wei Xiaochang.、Uh, mm. Historically, historically, Luchuans.、Uh, Had both the native Luchuan name as well as the Chinese name.、Uh, that is something that、uh, we are trying to revive.、Um, so yes, I am a native Luchuan, also known as Okinawan.、Um, uh, Luchu is the historical native name for our our country.、Uh, Okinawa is actually not even a native Okinawan name.、Uh, it's, it was created by the Japanese after they invaded. Uh, in 1879.、Um, so yes, I am native Luchuan.、Uh, uh, I'm president of the Peace for Okinawa Coalition,、uh, headquartered in Okinawa City.、Uh, our mission is to promote Luchuan、uh, culture, history, language, and rights. As、um, I'm sure you're familiar with,、uh, the U.S. and Japan they regularly violate the rights of Luchuans or Okinawans. On a daily basis, particularly with the heavy military occupation of our islands, and so、um, uh, for generations, Luchuans have resisted this.、Uh, but both the U.S. and Japan are are huge, huge countries, and Luch- Luchu is a small nation. You know, we have 1.4 million in Luchu,、uh, 2.1 million worldwide total. So、uh, there's We're, we're facing a, a tremendous uphill battle, so that's why the Peace for Okinawa Coalition was founded to help promote、uh, the rights and the voices of Luchuans.、Mm. And in the past week,、uh, basically the whole world is is following closely to the escalated tensions across Taiwan streets after Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan Island, and I also noticed that some people in Okinawa also.、Um, r- Share their concerns because they they are probably one of the closest places that near Taiwan Island. If it's not the not the closest to to Taiwan, so they don't want to see escalated tensions in this region. I don't know whether you pay attention to this news.、Uh, what are the thoughts of people in in Luchu? Yeah, absolutely.、Uh, Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, of course. Um, was very much on the minds of、uh, many Luchuans, probably most Luchuans.、Um, I do have to point out that the U.S. and Japan—they're always doing stupid things like this.、Uh, yeah, yeah, Pelosi's visit to Taiwan was very, very stupid.、Um, 
but uh, you know, the U.S. they're they're always doing things like this, just constantly. So um, mm-hmm. you know, Luchuans are more than fed up with this. So keep in mind, around ninety percent of the Luchu population opposes the U.S. and Japan. Uh, Japan military presence of our islands, okay, ninety percent. That's an astronomical percentage, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, so yes, of course, the Pelosi visit. Uh, of course, Luchuans um, are going to oppose that. Um, we we oppose pretty much everything. Every time the U.S. does something uh, just ridiculous like this, yeah, Luchuans definitely oppose it. The problem is. Um, uh, we we don't we don't there isn't much we can do about it. Yeah, we 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 criticize the U.S. and Japan. We uh, raise our voices. We we demonstrate, uh, uh, but um, you know, they they just ignore us. Uh, I do read news that uh, from time to time, local people in Okinawa will protest against the U.S. military bases in Okinawa. Uh, quite often, actually, the always some protests, right? Their sign said, our anger has reached its limit. Marines out. And they made sure nothing was lost in translation. We have been enduring cruel treatment for 70 years. And uh, this, story, this story also being confirmed by my other guest, another guest who joined me in another discussion about the whole issue about Taiwan Island. His name is Brian Boletic. Maybe you know him. He uh, he's a he's a geopolitical analyst in in Thailand now, but he used to serve in the U.S. Marine Corps in his younger age, and he was sent to Okinawa. So he he's now really against this uh, U.S. aggressions globally, and especially the meddling in Southeast Asia, entire Indo-Pacific region. And I remember he told me that when he first arrived in Okinawa. When he was young, he thought, I'm going abroad as a U.S. soldier to uh, promote peace and to protect the local people in Okinawa. And then he, when he landed in Okinawa, and he was surprised, he was shocked that local people were protesting. And they're like, why? We are here to protect you. Why you hate us? And then after a few years serving in, in that, that military base, he saw how horrible the attitudes the U.S. soldiers have towards the local people, especially the senior ones. And sometimes they committed really horrifying crimes towards the local people. And he realized, well, okay, the, apparently U.S. Army is not doing anything good globally. I think no one knows this better than you as a, as a local people there. So can you tell us what really happened in Okinawa? Yeah, yeah. So um, we are trying to promote local Luchuan or Okinawan voices because so often it's the Americans, right? The Westerners and the Japanese voices who are speaking for and over the voices of Luchuans or Okinawans, right? And so their perspective is very different from the native perspective, you know, a lot of the times. So, um, yeah, so Luchuans have been protesting the U.S. and Japan military occupation of our islands every day, every single day, uh, for generations. This is <laughs> this has been going on on a daily basis. So it's not mm-hmm. it's not from time to time. It's daily. Um, some some there are many different locations um, in the Luchu Islands where daily protests have been occurring for decades decades and so um uh, you know japan invaded luchu in 1879 prior to that luchu was a wealthy and successful independent country okay so japan invaded in 1879 uh did horrible things to the luchuan people um including a genocide in 1945 where one third of the okinawan population was murdered in just three months you know just killed in three months one third again it's a huge number huge huge wow. percentage of our population killed most people don't even know this right uh and then 1945 the the u.s took over and for, so from 1945 until 1972 luchuans lived under direct u.s military rule and then in 1972, the, the United States gave 
uh, Luchu to Japan. And since 1972, Luchuans have lived under joint U.S. and Japanese occupation. So, uh, uh, like you said, um, the, the U.S. and Japan, they cause so much harm to Luchuans on a daily basis in um, just numerous ways. You mentioned the crimes committed by U.S. soldiers. Uh, yes, of course, that's a, a very major concern. Um, Luchuans ha have suffered from uh, U.S. Uh, soldiers committing violent crimes against women, children, the elderly, uh, and violent crimes. We're talking about rape, murder, you know, uh, assault, things like that. And there have been cases where Luchuan men have tried to protect the women and children from these soldiers. And so what do the U.S. soldiers do? They just shoot the men, too. You know, they, they just kill the men. Remember, U.S. soldiers have guns, okay? We don't. <laughs> We're completely unarmed. But it's not just crime. Um, it's also environmental damage, uh, harm to our land and sea. Um, it's, um, it's economic deprivation, okay? Uh, the military bases in Okinawa uh, take up around 15% of Okinawa's land and around 30% of the arable or best lands, yet they contribute only around 5% to the local Okinawan economy. So it's running at a huge deficit. It's a tremendous economic burden on the Okinawan people. So um, a lot of Amer a lot of people in general don't realize this. Americans, they think very highly of themselves and they, they assume that um, Okinawans benefit economically from the military bases. This is not true at all. Uh, so economic deprivation, that is a major human rights violation. Um, and it's also an indicator of genocide, according to the United Nations. So, uh, you know, if you suppress our economy, then we won't be able to rise up and restore our independence, our, our right to self-determination. So everything from crime to uh, pollution, um, environmental damage, economic uh, deprivation, uh, not to mention the space, right? Uh, Luchuans, Luchuans don't want to live near military bases. Who, who wants to live near a military base? Right. A lot of times these bases, they're, they're not located off to the side, usually. A lot of times they're in the middle of major cities, such as Futenma Air Base. It's located in the heart of the densely populated city of Jinon or Ginoan. And I'm sure that local peoples can not even cross those streets that are in your own city, right? Right, right. Of course, of course, we can't. They'll never let us onto the military base unless, of course, uh, we get a job working for them. Right. Uh, in that case, that's different. But normal, uh, just civilians can't get on the base. And so uh, just can you imagine whatever city uh, your viewers or anyone watching this, whatever city or town you live in, can you just imagine for a moment a, a huge foreign military base in the middle of your city or town not off to the side but right in the middle of downtown can you imagine that uh, mm -hmm. uh and can you imagine all the problems that would cause on a daily basis i mean it's just astounding they don't want it so that's why they put their military bases in other parts of the world in other countries Actually, I have a video that with Rob already explained the history uh, of Okinawa and the connections between uh, China and Luchu. So I'm going to put this video. It's, a, it's about uh, like seven minutes long. So take a look. Since time immemorial, Okinawa was an independent nation known as Luchu with its own unique culture, history, languages, values, and identity. Luchu maintained close, friendly relations with China, Korea, and Southeast Asia. 
Luchu prospered as a center of international trade, finance, and cross-cultural exchange, and was the chief facilitator of a large and highly influential maritime trade network that stretched throughout Asia. Luchu was highly respected by other peoples around the world, including Westerners, who marveled at how a small nation such as Luchu was able to build a prosperous society where poverty was virtually non-existent. During the 19th century, Luchu became recognized by the international community as an independent country via the signing of treaties with the United States, France, and the Netherlands. In 1879, Japan used its new modern Western-style military to invade and illegally annex Luchu. This would be the first of Japan's many imperialist conquests through World War II. As Japan began to lose the war, it deliberately placed an inordinate amount of military presence onto Okinawa Island with the intent of sacrificing Okinawans in order to protect the Japanese homeland. This resulted in the Battle of Okinawa in 1945, in which roughly one-third of the indigenous Okinawan population was killed during a time span of just around three months. Japanese soldiers used the battle as a cover-up in order to deliberately murder Okinawan civilians, particularly those they caught speaking the native Okinawan language, as well as Luchu independence leaders. Japanese soldiers also used Okinawans as human shields and forcibly conscripted Okinawan civilians into the battlefield including women and children. After the war, most of Japan's other colonies regained their independence, but not Luchu. Instead, the United States decided to keep Luchu for itself to use for military bases. The United States military forcefully relocated thousands of Luchuans from their ancestral homes and imprisoned those who resisted in order to build these military bases. The United States also released convicted Japanese Class A war criminals such as Nobusuke Kishi because they believed he would lead Japan in a pro-America direction, which is exactly what he did. He would go on to become prime minister. Kishi's grandson, Shinzo Abe, continues the fascist legacy of his grandfather. He and numerous other Japanese politicians are continuously pushing Japan further into a right-wing, neoconservative, imperialist, and fascist direction. Not only are they trying to revive Japan's military strength, but they are also rewriting history, including Japan's textbooks, in order to cover up Japan's war crimes. For this reason, many of the younger generations in Japan today are completely unaware of Japan's dark past as an imperialist aggressor and are under the belief that Japan did nothing wrong. This is a grave concern for many Okinawans because although Okinawa makes up less than 1% of Japan's land area, it contains over 70% of Japan's military presence. Which of course means that Okinawa could once again very well be devastated in the event of a conflict. From 1945 through 1972, Luchu was under direct U.S. military rule, which meant that it also missed out on the decades of economic growth that Japan experienced during the 50s and 60s. Luchuan strongly resisted being under U.S. military rule, so in 1972, the U.S. gave Luchu to Japan without a vote from Luchuans in a move that is very much illegal under international law. And today, Luchu remains under joint occupation by both the United States and Japan both of whom commit major human rights violations against indigenous Luchuans on a daily basis. The military takes up around 15% of Okinawa's land and around 30% of its arable or best lands, but contributes only around 5% to Okinawa's economy, running at a huge deficit. This is, of course, a tremendous economic burden on the Okinawan people, many of whom are forced to work two or three jobs just to get by. Okinawa maintains a very high child poverty rate at around 25%. The U.S. military commits numerous crimes against Okinawan civilians, particularly violent crime against women and children. 
The United States military is also responsible for tremendous environmental destruction in Okinawa, including the current construction of another U.S. military base in the northern part of Okinawa at a location called Hinoko. The base's construction is destroying an ancient coral reef home to hundreds of rare and endangered species, including the Okinawa dugong. In February 2019, the Okinawan people held a referendum in which the overwhelming majority voted against the construction of this base. And yet, both the United States and Japan governments simply ignored the referendum and are continuing to build the base anyway. To make matters worse, the U.S. military has also poisoned Okinawa's water with cancer causing chemicals. Forcing thousands of Okinawans to buy bottled water. The US and Japan governments claim that this heavy military presence is necessary in order to protect Okinawans from China. However, very few people believe that, and even the US government has privately admitted that Okinawans do not see China as a threat. We know this via WikiLeaks, and it was published in the Wall Street Journal. I've done several videos in the past talking about Okinawa's relationship with China. Please check those out if you are interested in learning more. I will, however, say that China and Okinawa have always had very positive, friendly, and mutually beneficial relations. This dates back even to ancient times. China has never once harmed Okinawa or Luchu in any way, and actually, China has helped Luchu in many ways. Whereas Japan tries to rewrite history and tries to cover up Luchu's glorious past as an independent nation, China has rightfully acknowledged Luchu's history. And even recently at the United Nations, China played an instrumental role in helping pass a resolution that is being referred to as the Legacies of Colonialism. This resolution is very important and is being applauded by Luchuans and other oppressed peoples around the world who have experienced the harmful impact of Western imperialism. So, no, China is not a threat to Luchu, Hawaii, Guam, or any other nation in the Pacific. Rather, China offers an opportunity at multipolarity, an opportunity to expand our business, trade, and cross cultural relations in mutually beneficial ways. This is what I and many others believe we should be doing not only with China, but with many other nations around the world. This is how we can build a more peaceful and prosperous society for us all. It's not just military base in Okinawa, it's also in Guam. In, in Marshall Islands, in the Philippines, like the, the whole Pacific region. And actually, I think the uh, very famous uh, reporter, John Puger, actually did a documentary. It's called The Coming War on China. And in that video, he really researched into how all these military bases were aimed to encircle China and then to control the whole Southeast Asia. And、uh, they revealed the horrendous atrocities they committed in Marshall Islands. They tested nuclear weapons where, to see whether new weapons work well. But then, what did what did it do to local people? Not only they destroyed their country, they also poisoned local people with their nuclear weapons. Some people died, but the other, even though they survived, they have this poisons in their system. That later, they got. Uh, cancer later in their life, and also this pass on for generations. But not many people know that. And apparently, Okinawa or Luchu is one of the、um, important part of their aggression aggression network. They are using Okinawa and sacrificing the life of Okinawans to achieve their aggression network. <laughs> what? How? I wonder. What do you make of this whole U.S. imperialist goal for their own benefits? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's absolutely they're tr just trying to extend U.S. imperialism and hegemony. Right? It's the military-industrial complex. They're making a lot of money、uh, off of this. The local people are not making the money. Right? Average ordinary people are not making any money from this. Right? It's it's、uh, the elites. In the military-industrial complex, who are making a lot of money from this,、uh, so and the U.S. and Japan 
they both openly state like this is all about containing China. You you, you briefly mentioned uh, the the cancer causing uh, chemicals that that U.S. military uh, bases often uh, provide. Yeah, the same thing happened in Luchu. Um, recently, uh, the, the U.S. military has poisoned Luchu's water in, in many places. Um, so this has been a grave concern to Luchuans. Meanwhile, the U.S. military, they couldn't care less. They couldn't care less at all, of course. Uh, and so, but if your water is poisoned, you know, water is necessary for sustaining life. So if your water is poisoned, you can't live, right? And so, of course, of course, um, many Luchuans are saying, well, this is clearly genocide, right? They're, they're literally trying to kill us. Um, in 1945, the Battle of Okinawa, uh, the U.S. and Japan, they destroyed Okinawa. They killed one third of the um, Okinawan population. Okay. The battle only lasted three months, and yet one third of the uh, population was killed. Uh, so they 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 don't care about the lives of of Luchuans. Uh, in fact, if if Luchuans were to die out as a, a people group, as a nation, uh, the U.S. and Japan would rejoice. They would be glad. They would be very happy because then they could use all of our islands for themselves to use for military bases and tourist resorts, you know, and they would no longer have Luchuans like us to criticize them and to protest against them. You see what I'm saying? So uh, if, if the U.S. and Japan have another opportunity to just annihilate Luchuans, they would absolutely take it in a heartbeat. Absolutely. They are more than happy to sacrifice the lives of Luchuans to start a war with uh, any country, really. You know, they, they just don't care. Isn't that funny? Because you, the United States is the one that's shouting the loudest that they care about uh, human rights. They go around the world lecturing different countries, different culture, uh, the importance to defend human rights. But then, like you said, they didn't give a damn F to the local people in Luchu where their military bases are there. I mean, how, hypocr how hypocritical is that? Just like when they say we care so much about the human rights and religious freedom of Muslims in China while they are the biggest offender of human rights for Muslims across the world. <laughs> and now, then, right? So they're their human rights or their protection for human rights or defend for 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 democracy or freedom or whatever is really just a, a just a stick to beat other countries down well actually they are the biggest human rights offender yeah yeah that's right uh, the u.s has an atrocious track record of human rights in general but um particularly against indigenous peoples against minorities the the united states was founded on genocide and slavery, okay? Its very foundation is built on genocide and slavery. So I, I guess in that context, of course, of course the United States is, is like this because that's how, they, that's how they got started in the first place. That's how they rose to power, was on, on slavery and oppression. So uh, of course uh, uh, the US, the way, uh, the U.S. treats Luchuans, of course, is terrible. Uh, but also, if you look at the Chamorro in Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands, who also suffer from um, uh, major human rights violations committed by the U.S., if you look at Native Hawaiians, uh, if you look at Native Americans, right? So the U.S. has never cared about the lives of indigenous peoples or, or minorities. It's the U.S. is really just an oligarchy of the elites. Well, you mentioned that the United States and Japan are the two countries that uh, didn't care about the Luchun people's um, human rights. Or It's funny because these two countries are the only two countries in the world that are they're really against the Chinese military exercises. Uh, around the uh, around the Taiwan island, which is China's territory, recognized by the international community, 
So these are the only two countries that are against these military drills, and they are the ones who are using uh, Okinawa. So I mean, I just find it really hilarious. And you mentioned Hawaii. I think it's also very hypocritical. They keep saying how much they care about people in Taiwan Island, even though like people in Taiwan are Chinese. They speak Chinese. They practice Chinese culture.、Um, everything is like very Chinese. But they say they care about the culture of people in Taiwan Island. But then they were ignoring what happened to locals in Hawaii. I mean, what about Hawaiians? Why are you not caring about their human rights and their culture? You're literally almost erasing their people, their culture, their language, and they also have military bases in Hawaii. Yes, yes, a very large military presence in Hawaii. So a lot of people around the world they don't realize the history of Hawaii.、Uh, so. Actually, the history of Hawaii is very similar to the history of Luchu. Very similar. Hawaii was an independent country, a highly respected independent country,、um, until 1893, when a small group of of、uh, white insurgents、um, collaborate. They conspired with the the U.S.、Uh, ambassador to Hawaii. Uh, and the U.S. Marines to illegally invade and overthrow the the, the rightful Hawaiian Kingdom government. So, and, and then the United States、um, they wanted to annex Hawaii to use for military bases to expand,、uh, you know, to expand towards towards Asia.、Uh, and so, but they couldn't do that because the Hawaiian people, ninety percent of the Hawaiian people. Uh, opposed annexation. They signed petitions、uh, opposing U.S. annexation and, and supporting the restoration of the Hawaiian Kingdom government. Uh, uh, and so, what did the United States do? They just ignored the petitions and they illegally annexed Hawaii against the, the will of the people. So, um,、uh, the the U.S. Uh, to this day, never legally annexed Hawaii. They did through fraud. They they simply said, "Well, <laughs> we're we're just gonna we're just gonna keep Hawaii for ourselves, and that's it." Okay, it's it's, it's complete fraud. So,、um, basically, Luchuans, Hawaiians, Chamorro, and、uh, Native Americans,、uh, specifically Native Alaskans.、Uh, The four of us have come together, and we've sort of formed our own、uh, unofficial coalition of sorts,、uh, opposing the U.S. military and supporting the restoration of our rightful independence. I really hope to, yeah, I hope people to really realize. Because、um, just last week, I talked to this、uh, Taiwan compatriot, uh, he, uh, Zhang Yu, in my last video. And he said the the United States doesn't care about Taiwan people. They don't care the people in Taiwan. They just see Taiwan Island as the natural、uh, aircraft carrier that cannot be sunk. So I think it's kind of the same how they see Hawaii, Luchu, Marshall Islands. They are in the middle of the ocean. They are they are the island. They are far away from their own territory. So they are the natural aircraft carrier for themselves. Yeah. That's that's absolutely it, and and you know Luchuans are not stupid, you know,、uh, many Luchuans, maybe probably most Luchuans are aware of this. Like you know, it's it's not that hard to figure out. So so yeah, of course Luchuans are going to oppose,、uh, and the idea of another war breaking out、um, in Luchu, and again just devastating. Uh, the Luchu Islands, killing the people. That is a very grave concern to us. Okay, nineteen forty-five. That wasn't that long ago. You know, my、uh, my grandparents, my、uh, grand uncles and aunties. They 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 survived it. They lived through it, right? But many did not. You know, one third of the population was killed. Every it is said that every. Luchu and family lost someone, including my family. You know, we lost many.、Uh, there are quite a few. There are many, many memorials across the Luchu Islands 
uh, mm -hmm. dedicated to those who lost their lives due to Japanese and U.S. aggression. You know, so, yeah, of course, we're gravely concerned about the possibility of another war uh, breaking out in our islands caused by the U.S. and Japan. My uh, my friend, Professor Hoshin Nakamura from Okinawa University, he uh, he once told me that during the Vietnam War, the U.S. military told them, uh, told Okinawans living at the time, said, oh, we're here to protect you from the Viet Cong. OK, well, the Viet Cong won the war and they never invaded Okinawa. So. Uh, and and now they're saying the exact same thing about China. Oh, well, we're here to protect you from from China, but no no one believes that. E hmm. Even the U.S. government has privately admitted via WikiLeaks that uh, Okinawans are overwhelmingly uh, pro-China. <laughs> Okinawans don't consider China to be a threat. So hmm. even the U.S. government has privately admitted this. It's not a secret, you know, everyone knows it, so. Uh, but like, how come? Because Okinawa is so close to China, and uh, I mean, everybody, uh, mainly the, the Western world, sees China as, a, as a ch such a huge threat. And uh, they warn every continent, every country, they, they go to Africa, Latin America, Southeast Asia, to warn those countries to be careful with China, don't work with China, uh, they're gonna, it, it's a trap. And Okinawa is so close to China. So, I mean, why Okinawans are not afraid of China? China and Luchu have a history of friendship and peace and mutual cooperation, you know, mutually beneficial cooperation. We have a history of that that dates back thousands of years. It dates back to, to ancient times. Um, so China, China is Luchu's closest neighbor. Uh, many major Chinese cities are much closer to Naha, the largest city in Luchu, than Tokyo is. You know, so historically, China was Luchu's strongest and most important partner in every regard: trade, uh, politics, diplomacy, uh, cross-cultural exchange. China was the most important friend. And neighbor to Luchu. It was not Japan. Okay. Japan was not part of this picture. So China and Luchu have this history of mutually beneficial cooperation uh, that dates back um, to ancient times. And even to this day, to this day, there are many major um, Chinese cultural elements in Luchuan society. You know, even my background here, which this is, this is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a scene um, that depicts traditional Luchuan uh, culture, aspects of our culture. If you see here, uh, these dancers, uh, they're actually, these are Luchuan dancers, but they're dancing a traditional Chinese dance. So in Luchu, we call this dance Tafaku. Uh, it originated from China uh, during the Ming Dynasty, and later it was updated to uh, uh, it, it, the costumes you see here are from the Qing dynasty, but actually the dance itself originated during the Ming. So, mm. you know, that's, that's hundreds of years ago. So that's just one of many examples uh, uh, of Chinese culture in Luchun society to this day. So of course, uh, China, uh, China has always been a Luchu's closest friend. And even though uh, China and Luchu are so close together, right? So close geographically. Um, and Luchu is very small. Like, if China wanted to invade Luchu, they could do it no problem. No problem, right? Uh, because what are we going to do? I mean, China, huge a country, the most powerful country on earth throughout most of history, right? Luchu, a very small country, pretty much defenseless. And yet, China has never invaded Luchu, not even once. China has never harmed Luchu in any way. In fact, uh, there are no historical records of China and Luxu ever having any type of conflict, you know, in, in any way whatsoever over the course of these thousands of years. So it's, it's just amazing. So the China Luxu relationship should be used as an example of peace and uh, 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 cooperation. You know, it, 
it's it's China. That's that's really why uh, hmm. Lutuans just don't see China as a threat. So they, hmm. China's never invaded before in thousands of years. Why would they invade now? That reminds me of uh, I think that's the speech interview given by a former Malaysian uh, ambassador. And I think some reporters asked him like, "Are they afraid of China?" And he said a very similar thing. Like uh, Malaysia has a relationship with China for almost two thousand years, and never once did China invaded Malaysia. And they worked with the British for two、uh, hundred years, and they immediately got conquered. So... <laughs> In eighteen seventy nine, when Japan illegally invaded and and annexed Luchu, okay, some Luchuans they fled to China in exile, where they were trying to get China to help Luchu, help restore Luchu's independence. Uh, of course, China at the time was just too weak. There, there was nothing China could do. China did try to to help negotiate、uh, an agreement with Japan, but no, it it didn't work. Ch- China was too weak. Luchu was too weak at the time.、Um, so, some Luchuans actually lived out the remainder of their lives in exile in China, where they continued to hope and pray for the day that China would once again become strong enough to help. Free Luchu and restore Luchu's independence. Very interesting historical fact, but not many people know that. I really hope people to really understand, to really look look what is happening in this region. So, if anyone wants to know more about this history, about what is happening in Okinawa, go to check、uh, Rob's work. Well, our website is peaceforokinawa.org. And my Twitter at Rob Kajiwara. So thank you so much, Rob. Thank you for your time, and、uh, I do hope that this conversation will make more people aware what is happening. Even though it may be not many,、uh, but we can try everything possible to bring this to awareness. Yes, thank you.